Hi, hello. Welcome to the Eye of the Tiger podcast, episode three. Tried to record this twice before. First time you could ever see our faces. Second time, we have our mates knocking on the door. Oh, fan bloody tastic. Well, we've got fans. Yeah. Oh. That's what we're going with. Yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah, that's where we're going. Um, yeah, John by Lennon again. Hello. Um, we tried to have Ethan on as well, the three of us. Didn't quite work out, did it? No. Because I get back, so that delays it for another two weeks. We've, now, in this episode, we've got to talk about a million games, all in half an hour. Then we've got to... Talk about third kit. Yep. Dead Lander. Talk about everything. A then lot. I'm like, oh, boys, let's all let's all come in together. Make it a lot easier. Ethan's an oldie. <sighs> Amazing. Tried, tried to get us all down at the training ground when I was home, didn't we? Ethan was at Leeds Fest. Nothing's. Nothing's working, is it? But in a couple of weeks, when we've got our setback, it will all be perfect. It will all be swimmingly. And you'll be able to see what improvements we've made. But, right, we're going to start off then by talking about the first game of the season. Swansea. We started off very, very well, didn't we? Oh, very well. Third uh, minute, Dan Batty, no, yeah, it was, no, it was Camille Brzezicki's shot turned in by Dan Batty. Yeah. Batty's first goal for the club. Um, I even it. Three minutes in, I'm just, I'm just on the field, just up there, screaming, we are all city, we're top of the league. Like, oh, lad, let's end the season now. Yeah. And then, um, a couple of us go and get a subway, then... Harrison, seeing him, cameraman's a lot of the documentaries, says, Joe, what would you do if Swansea scored three minutes in the second half? I'd say, well, I said, well, that will happen, will it? <laughs> Guessing who Jinx does. Yep, two goals in two minutes. I just... It's... See, the football he's got to play, very, very good football, but it always works in the first half, but the second half come out oh, tired. We are, we are the most first half team. Ever. And then it just crumbles second half every But we're going to contradict season. ourselves in a minute because we're going to talk about Bristol City. Oh, God. Um, yeah, we play, I watched us in pre season, we play very, very, very good football. Oh, we do. I've, I've been to a lot of the young games, play very good football. We play really good football. The fo- I like attacking football, we've missed it. No, oh, no. Steve Bruce, I love Steve Bruce. I do. I still love Steve Bruce. And um, when I hear all the Newcastle fans moaning on Twitter, just say, look, you've got Steve Bruce. When you come in the championship, it's fine. Not oh, prepared for that. Yeah, you'll get the odd boring game. Like when we played Sheffield Wednesday at home last season, when he was still watching cricket in Australia, even Steve Agnew, his assistant, it was just... It had Steve Bruce football written all over it. Mm. And that's... Not what we've got with Grant. Slutsky, he was just very one-dimensional. Never was good on doing really. Um Silver's football. I missed that to be honest. I missed that. See, I was Silver's football, very like ticky tacker I loved it. Oh, I, I didn't mind that. when we were passing back, because what we were doing, we were, cre- we were creating space high up the field, pulling their defence out for the long ball over the top to Markovic or Brzezicki. And it's just the players we had back then. Look where they are now. Harry Maguire. Robertson. In our new set, we're going to have a big picture of Harry Maguire. I think that's perfect. We're going to have a big picture of Harry Maguire. It's got to be done. It has got to be done. It has got to be done. When, uh, yeah, look at those players. All we've got left is Brzezicki. Right, Jocko. Brzezicki and Bowie. Bowie. And, and even then, Bowie had only played the first, last game of the season. Yeah, they yeah. played a couple of times in the cup. But yeah, so, Sw- so Swansea was a bit of a gutting game. Yeah. Because in the second half, we weren't good at all. I know. We were shocking. We're always like that in second half this season. It's just crumbled. Second half, we used to come to life. Oh, yeah, last Under season. Adkins. Second half, we fall apart, we grab. But yeah, then afterwards, after Swansea, came deadline day. It was. I was very happy with Deadline. Oh, I was. I was very shocked as well. It was my second. It was my first full day in Turkey. 
sat in a restaurant, uh, I think it must have been like, yeah, it was 7 o'clock local time, just constantly refreshing my Twitter, constantly refreshing my Instagram. Um, we signed Honeyman a couple, of, a couple of days before, then we started off the day, started off the day, it was more like midday, Matthew Pennington. Don't even see anything of it. We've not seen much of him, but at Ipswich, when he was linked with Leeds, when he's played for Everton, he's looked a very good player. I met Everton fans on holiday, they said Burl is very good. Yeah. And they said that Pennington's a very good player. I think Burl is very good. Pennington. I haven't seen much of him, so. We, haven't, we haven't really seen Pennington, have we? No, not one bit. I mean, when we have a home FA Cup game, sure. Yeah. If we have a home FA Cup game. We didn't have one last year because we got knocked out in the first round. And then the home Carabao Cup game we had was in mean, bloody North Yorkshire. So after after Pennington, in came the, the Silva Lopez. it was Leonardo da Silva Lopez. Yeah. So, but against Bristol, they actually played very well. I, know. I was very impressed. The Silva, he's very, he's a very, very like versatile player. Mm. He could play centre mid against Tranmere. Everyone who was there said he looked really, really good. He does. I think he's quite good. I'm and at full back when he was filling in for Lee High against Brentford, he looked class. I was sat in the restaurant in my hotel. I met a City fan there. Mm. He had, he found a stream on Facebook, so we watched that. We, he he looked really, really good. Yeah, I think. But still at home as well. He looked. He looked good. He was putting in tackles. One for to get stuck in, but just yeah. in the end. Um, who who came in next? Then it went very quiet until the last like hour, when we nicked in Callum Elder. From Leicester. Yeah. I mean, look at our left back situation. Brandon Fleming's good, but he's too. He's not good enough yet. I don't think he's. He's not fast enough, so he can't be captured. He doesn't catch up to winners. I like Fleming. I do like Fleming because he's come from through the academy. It's quite good that he's getting games on, but it's just time. It take time like, for him to improve. We mentioned it in the Jacob Reeves podcast. He mentioned it. We're real good at bringing through left backs. Oh yeah, we are. Connor Townsend. Time, Clark, yeah, exactly. Fleming. He mentioned Matty Jacob as well. Mm. So we're very good at bringing through, bringing through left backs. Yeah. I tell you what, though, we keep like let, we need to talk about Kingsley for a second, right? He was he's been awful to start this season. Been, been impressive in one bit. And when we sat like it was rumored that when I arrived in Turkey, oh we're looking to we're looking to sell Kingsley. The European window is open until the 2nd of September, we're looking to get rid of him, that's class. Like, Scotland, you need to go back there, mate. It, it does put in an all right shift for a, for a bit of the game and then it kind of, it's, it's 50, no, it's not even 50, 50, 50. It's more 75. Yeah, he does have his own game, but not really. We then, yeah, so Elder, he, he hasn't played yet because he's been injured the entire time. Mm -hmm. But he's, from what I've read, he's getting very, very close to full fitness. He's very, very close. He's looking good. He's out on the grass. So is McDonald as well. Just to touch on McDonald quickly. It's been hard for him. Really, it's been it? very difficult for him. It has been very, very difficult for him. I think when he plays well, he's quite a good, solid centre back. Which it'd be injury. Injuries. He had his little, he had his little shoulder injury, didn't he? Yeah. Then he came back. Then he had his um, deep vein thrombosis, which can't be nice for anyone. No, can't, not one bit. Um, then we brought in Josh McGuinness as well. McGuinness, McGuinness. God, he's horrific. Uh, I mean, it's, like, his goal record, it's horrific. Came on against Bristol when I was there. He was just... He's shocking. He's shocking. He was shooting. Shocking. Shooting from miles out when he was he look, shooting. He, he looks like, he looks a bit... He looks big and stuff. He looks big, but it ain't muscle, is it? No, it's not. It's not muscle. I'm sorry, Josh. I think he it ain't muscle. I think watching highlights him, he scores headers, which is good. But, but we've got two strikers who can score headers, and none of them can score anything else. Tommy's. He needs to get on the score sheet very soon. It's he does. 
missing quite good chance. He gets in good positions. He's a good player in my opinion. I tell you what, when he gets held down by defenders too much, well, you got we got you got to expect it in modern day football, aren't you? Yeah. He just loses his temper against Blackburn. He full he full of booing someone in the shins. Mm. <laughs> You'd have seen it against Bristol City. Just bashed him off. Yeah. I think when he gets a bit fed up, he's a bit of a hothead. Some of that was quite worrying is the bikes coming off against Bristol. Oh, Jordy! <laughs> and the thing is, what me and my dad were saying, and my dad's mate and that, was saying as soon as he came off, the defence just just looked. I, mean, I, I, I was one of Jordy Device's biggest critics when he first came. Yeah, I think it one more season. I love him now. I love Tommy Elfie definitely brought him on. Oh, yeah, massively. I was about to say Liam Ridgewell did as well, but no, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, when he first came in. Speaking of Liam Ridgewell, though, he's gonna he's working at the same club as Craig Fagan. Mm. Craig Fagan just left our academy. I mean, didn't really do much with the first team, so it's no. not really a big loss. But someone who knows the club would have been good to pass it through to those young boys. Yeah, but, you know. Right. So deadline day, how would you rate it? A little touch on McGuinness as well. He came. From, he's come from a club which are crap, which have been earned awfully, and uh, to another club that have been earned awfully. But at least he'll get paid. Yeah. Mm. But now, like, we need just little touch on Bolton. That's disgusting. Could be out of football league by far tonight. As we're recording this, yeah, we, I read a figure online that Ken Anderson and his son, the highest paid directors in the football league combined. I think he paid himself seven hundred and fifty grand, paid his son hundred and eighty, hundred and eighty five grand I think it was. I, I want and yet it and yet you're not bothering to and you're paying the rest of the club officials more and you're more bothered about paying them than you are your players, your exactly. staff. The people who get you results on the pitch. I was happy when I found out Berry got a deal done. Oh, honestly. It's a, it's a bad side to see clubs going into states like this. Right. I hope and get a deal. Me and my dad were talking about it the other day. Like, when was the last time we had a club cease to exist? We were talking about it, it was like a Chester stone, the girls. Like, yep. So you reckon, it's a, the last team it was, the ori- I, he thinks it's the original Wimbledon. Yeah. How they moved to Milton Keynes. But then, League One, mate, what? EFL, why, why, don't they, why don't the FA step in? Exactly. This is becoming to a Bolton podcast now. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, just let me ring up Fogden. Um, it's not, like, why don't the FA step in? Why, do, why don't the FA, the EFL, the Football Association, step in, do something? Oh, I've seen brilliant results against both Berry and Bolton. But I, right, I tell you what, right, League One, you've got a club, bottom of the league, on minus 12 points, Berry. Then you've got a team, second bottom, on minus 11, Bolton. <laughs> anyway, it, it is disgusting. Yeah, no. But now McGuinness has got that stamped on his CV, he's forever going to have that, mm. so it'll always be a black mark. Anyway, right, now we're going to go to Reading, our only win this season. Right, because I won, because I won there, I uh, text my good friend Lewis, who I sit next to at the games. I was there. I text, what was the game like? He said, excellent first half, played high press, they barely got in our half. Eves played well, second half, barely any press and they were in control. Key points were Kingsley was woeful and Stewart didn't let anyone past him. Mm, that was true, I was there. Um, so a lot of it was good football. Elder needs to be better than Kingsley and Honeyman didn't really have much to do, so I still don't know what he's like. Mm. So, from that one, I was just sat around the pool, my hotel was just constantly refreshing. I'd just gone up to my room and I, and I just hear, <sighs> my phone, and I'm like, 1 0 already? It's 6 minutes! 2 goals! In 20 minutes. Come on, you all! I was expecting like 4 0 and then 
we didn't score the rest of the first half. But George Long and Reese Burke did some brilliant defensive work. Device as well, Lee High. I'm not going to lie, they hit the post in the first half. And that saved us the three points. Oh, didn't, didn't that push cash as well hit the bar? Yeah, in like the 89th minute or something like that. Oh, God. The thing is, what was annoying about that game, not the football or anything, the referee, we gave away 24 fouls for the pure fact of we kept down every time someone fell on the floor. 24? 24. Jesus Christ. But Reading, we can agree, good performance. Good performance. Yeah. Good performance. It's gone downhill from there. <laughs> now we're going to talk about the release of the third kit based on the beloved Boothley Park. Exactly. Um, the blue, not sure what part of it represents, no, probably. Me neither. I mean, none of us were alive when we were there. I think all the kits that have been released season released some very We have released kits. some really nice all kits. All of us done a well good job. I think, like, from what I've seen on Twitter, the blue is, like, based on, like, a bit of, like, a, a shop somewhere yeah. near it. And then people are saying the yellow bit is uh, the same colour as the mould that was on the South Stand toilets. Mm. <laughs> Put together what you can and you get a nice kit. <laughs> oh, there. Put together um, a bit of mould on the toilets, yeah. That's and, good. and a shop. A shop. Lovely, Lovely kit Lovely in 2019. Exactly. It makes no sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's a family. It's a beautiful kit. Yeah. Beautiful kit. Um, I was going to put this on the group chat yesterday. We all need to get one of the kits and put, like, Greaves 30, Lewis Potter 31, and Salam 33 on it. I've got the own kit. Because, uh, in fact, no, I will say it, I'll tell you off camera. Mm. But something about the end of the season and a player. Mm -hmm. right. right, next up's Tranmere. I was sat in a bar for this, a bar with a turtle wandering on the table. <laughs> and a little tortoise like this in the bar, called Oscar it was, the brought because my sister was there. She was just feeding it a bit of lettuce. I hear kick off, 20 seconds later, oh. goal. Nineteen seconds! John Torral. He does it every year in this round of the Carabao Cup. John Torral, mate! I think he deserves more game time. He does! And then Milinkovic went and scored as yeah. well. And then Taff as well, though. Big Taff. Yeah, exactly. Massive. What a guy. What a guy. It was a good performance, again. Yeah, then the second half we were mediocre. Yeah, exactly. Mediocre at best. I get, yeah, they were League One sad. Don't really matter. Uh, I mean, Milinkovic, uh, from what I heard, he was very much like hit or miss in that game as well. Mm. He missed some right good chances. Bola should have scored as well. Their keeper made some brilliant saves. Uh, yeah, I've seen the highlights. Honestly. Mm. Like, we should have won that game more than we did on that first half performance alone. Based on the second half, Tranmere should have battered us. We were awful. Mm. But. Fair play to Tranmere for trying to bring it back. Just Matt Ingram's a bit too good, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Um, so, Tranmere, good. Pressing in the next round of the Cup. That's tonight as we're recording this. You'll probably see this Wednesday, but I'm trying to get this turned around as quick as possible. So, so we'll talk about that. Something. Right, how long have we got left? Right, we've got about ten, like eight minutes. So, we've got a whiz through. Brentford, boring first half. And then it kind of spun to life. And then um, who scored? Bowen and Watkins. Oh, but yeah, it was Bowen, wasn't it? Yeah. Lehigh gets injured. He takes off as a precaution. We see De Silva Lopez for the first time in the league. Came in, did amazing. Watkins. Amazing. Yeah, we just mentioned that at Tranmere as well, couldn't even captain the team on his exactly. first start. Wow. 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 I don't think much of him. I don't. Honeyman, I don't. I don't, he's alright, but... Sunderland fans always say about players that are sold to us, awful graft, but Mitch. they're awful. But they've said that about Elmo, McShane, Myler, all... Not being biased about Myler, by the way, I love him. No, everyone loves Myler. Everyone loves Myler. Yeah. Did you see that he was at the Reading game as well? Mm -hmm. Adkins was at the Reading game, Milo was at the Reading game. Didn't know about that. Nigel Adkins is always tweeting, oh, good... Uh, Nice to see Hull City, try, nice to see Grant McCann, whatever. Yeah. And he, he even, because Grant McCann's one of his former players, how he said, look, how he said, look, good luck to Grant when he just left his post at City mm -hmm. and Grant got left. That is, that is a touch of class. 
Yeah. Love, love, love Nigel. <laughs> if we could ever get him on a podcast. Um, so Brentford, solid performance. Deserved to win. We, des- we did deserve to win. Brentford said we play- Brentford fans said we played very, very good football and we deserved to win. They were lucky to come away with a point. But well, our fans also said Brentford were very solid defensively and we can see them going far. Um, next up, Blackburn. Oh, good Christ on a oh, flipping unicycle. <laughs> it's Bowie. I mean, it's, I think all keepers. If you were championship keeper. Hey, right. Were you right? You were at the Blackburn game, weren't you? No, I missed that. Oh, right. I right. I got told before the game by Lewis and Gordon that there was minimal Blackburn fans there, but there was a guy stood on the steps where the penalty was. He just kept prancing about doing star jumps like this. Yeah, it won't surprise me because, I, well, it don't surprise me that Bowen missed. I think he needs to start going different places with his pens. Everyone Jared always goes right in one of the corners. Always. But this time, it was a per- it was the perfect height for his keeper. Perfect height. Any keeper could say, but guess the right way and you've got it. But it was not too close corner. Perfect height. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's a horrific pen. I got told he struck it well, just in the wrong place. Yeah. Then, um, Everton conceded. Kingsley, awful again. Yeah. That, their goal shouldn't have stood, obstructed George Long, but even then, Robbie McKenzie. He's not. He needs to start. Like, Robbie, man. I get his young. Get his young, but still a tech man. So is Bowie, so is Bat- so exactly. Batty, so is Fleming. They're, they all play competently. Yeah, exactly. And Kings is older than them all. Look what he's doing. I think marriage has made him worse. Yeah. <laughs> he got married got married in the summer. He barely piled on a bit too much weight. <laughs> then then landed back in England for Bristol City. We played very, very well. We played best of the first half, best of the second. That Bowen gave it large, all their fans mocking him for it now. Um, they all, all, uh, all his, uh, like, they all tweeted his girlfriend about it and stuff and Jazz was just like, that's a bit mean on Twitter. Yeah, I think, in my opinion, we deserved the three points. We did, stuff but, like. but like you said earlier, as soon as Device went off, it just... Burke beat. scored a goal. Long should be shouting for that, like, I race Leavis, Kempers! And we should have made substitutions when we were on top and we could have capitalised. Exactly, but could I've just ignored the subs? Just ignore that. And then bring them on late and like the eight. Bring them on late, like do it with the Guinness on. Apparently, like I got told against Blackburn, he didn't touch the ball once. It's like they just tried to stop him to sp- they tried to not yeah, give him the ball. Yeah, what's not real annoying is what, obviously I was at the game. You were at Bristol. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like when McGuinness came on, got the ball from like thirty yards out and just hit it. Paywell went and keeper just picked it up. Just yeah. faded through or something. Like this. Then we have, right, it, then, so Bristol City was a disappointment. Quite funny though, there was a fan in a white top giving it loads of the old fans after the game. Dad was joking with me and my mate saying, oh, go give them loads and hit them or something from just for a laugh. And the next thing you know, some big kid comes over and starts pushing them about. <laughs> he was getting lit, he got broke up, it was quite Weekly, funny. off in the 88th minute. Mm, don't blame you. Right, how long have we got? Right, Three minutes. Three minutes to preview Preston in the cup. We're not right, we're not going to preview the score properly. Oh. I'll say we just say right if we get through, who do we want in the next round? In the next round, I either want a little team at home. Yeah, a little team at home. A big team at home or a big team away. I don't want to go to like a League Two team away. I want I want a, I want because like I think some Premier League clubs come into it next time, like Newcastle come into it. Um, I wouldn't mind a big team away. I wouldn't mind a Norwich, I wouldn't mind a Newcastle at home. I wouldn't mind like a League 2 away or a League 1 though because my dad would go home and stuff so. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind like a Scunny or a Lincoln. Mm, I'm looking forward to what it's built away though. A Scunny, a Scunny even in it? I don't know. No, me. This <laughs> is probably the most ill informed piece of news ever. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know if these teams are still in it. It's just because they're literally right across the upper bridge so it is. Chill. Right, we've got a minute left. One sole minute. Don't know what's I mean, 
to actually we'll preview Millwall quickly. Millwall. It's a it's a race. It's so Ehabalam will be at that game, mm -hmm. which will mean it's all gonna go to pot. Yeah, exactly. No, we'll start winning when he's there, won't we? Mm, you never know. Millwall. Millwall. Millwall's a tough place to go. I reckon we can come, maybe come away with a point. I wouldn't say three. It'll be. Yeah, we won't come. Close. We won't come away with three. I think I think we can come away with at least a point. Though. Yeah, if we get be. three, I will be. So I'll happy. be over the moon. If we get three, that will be class. Yeah. The th like to get three Millwall, say Ehab, oh, it gets to the games, mate. It, you might have bricks chucked at your head, but get to the games, you'll help, you'll yeah, help exactly. us do well. It'd say it. something, wouldn't it? Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, it'll turn up because it's in London, so yeah, right. So, score predictions for it then? No one. Yeah. One all. One all. Right, I'm going to save mine for my preview, but my er my early prediction is we can bag a little, we can bag some sort of result. Mm -hmm. Right, that is where we're going to leave this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do whack a like on it. We've got 20 seconds left. Um, links to the podcast Instagram and Lennon all down in the description. There's a playlist as well that you can check on my channel homepage with all the episodes in it. So we will see you in the next episode where fingers crossed we'll have Ethan with us as well. Hopefully. And we might have our set! Yeah, sure.